Hi, in this video I'll take you through the Ansible file module. We'll go through how to create directories and files recursively and also how to delete them as well. We'll go through how we can change permissions for who can access the files and directories and in the end of the video I'll take you through all the different states which we can apply on both files and directories using the file module. So let's get started and see how we can do all that. Let's start off by creating a directory. So I will specify a task with the name created directory. I will then make use of the file module and and the first parameter which we have to specify is the path parameter which sets the location of where we want to create the directory. We will put it in some directory and call it new directory. We also have to set the state and the state in this case is just directory. Let's also create a file. So I will copy this code and create a file. I will name it created file. We will use the file module and the path will just be the same, but the name will be different. So let's call it file.txt. And the state in this case is not directory, but we should use touch. Let's then create a file inside the new directory which we created. So I will call this created file inside directory. And we have to have the full path with the new directory in it. So let's put that in here and call it file2. Let's see what happens if you run this playbook. Let's take a look on the servers and we see that we are already inside the directory and in here we have the file.txt and the new directory which we created and if we take a look inside the new directory we have the file2.txt. We are able to control the access rights to this directory as well using the file module. So let's take a look at what we already have. So inside the Ubuntu machine, we still have the new directory which we created before. And if we take a more detailed look at that, we see that the group is set to Chris, the owner is set to Chris, and those are the access rights which currently apply for the new directory. We can change all of that using the file module. So the first flag which we want to put in here is the owner and I will set that to root. I will then change the group and set that to root as well. And the access rights can be modified with the flag mode. And in here, I can put in a octal number. But what is that? So octal notation is a numerical system for modifying the permissions on a Unix-like system, like Linux or Mac. And whenever I have to provide access rights uh, with a, an octal number, I make use of this website called permissionscalculator.org. In here, you can type in a octal number like 0170, and then down here you see what permissions will be applied. So the group will get read, write, execute access, and the user will get execute access. So under the octal tab, you can set your own permissions here, and that will generate the octal number which you are going to use to applying those permissions. Under the symbolic tab, you can do that as well. And you will be provided with both the octal number and a symbolic notation down here. So I will copy this octal number and use that in my playbook. So I will copy and paste that in here. So another flag which I want to put in here is the recurse flag and I will put that to yes. So basically what this does is that it will recursively apply all those rules on everything inside the directory. And because it is a directory, we often have files and other stuff in there. And I want to apply those rules on everything inside the directory. The last thing which we have to think about is that whenever we are changing ownership and the group and specifying the, um, the access rights here, we want to do that as a root user of the Linux system. And we do that by typing become yes. If we type that up here, this will apply on all the tasks, but we currently just have one task, so I will just let it be up here. Let's try to run this playbook and see what happens. Let's take a look inside the Ubuntu machines, and if we get a detailed look, we see that the group is now set to root, the owner is set to root, and those are the new access right permissions which were set for the new directory. And this also counts for everything on machine number two. 
I would like to take you through the different states which we can apply on the file module. And the first state is the directory state, which we have already seen in action. This creates a directory and places the directory on a path and the path is specified up here. The next state is another state which we have seen in action and that is the touch stage, which creates any kind of file on a target host. So in this case, you can create a text.txt or PHP or JSON or whatever you want. Then we have the file state. The file state checks that the path is indeed a file. And if it is not a file and if, if it is not existing, it will fail the Ansible playbook. So in our case, we actually have a file.txt on the machine. So let's try to put that in here and run the playbook. As you can see, the playbook ran successfully and we did not change anything. We just get, got an OK because it checked that the file actually exists. Next up is the link state and we use that to create a symbolic link to a file which is located on the target machine. If we take a look at the target machine, we find that we have the file.txt which we created earlier. So we have to change the path to being a source and the source will be the path to the file.txt. We will then have to create a destination for the link and we'll place that destination to being in the same directory and we'll call that file link.txt. Let's run this playbook. Let's take a look at the target machines. And we see that we have the file and we have a link to that file right here. So if we change anything inside file.txt, if you write hello world, for example, and save that, we can access that through the file link. And we now see that we have the text which we just wrote in the file.txt. If we were to remove file.txt, we also see that the link is now broken and we cannot access the file through this link anymore. As an opposite to the soft link, we have hard link and we can create a hard link between two files with the hard state. So the difference between those two is that if you have a soft link and you delete the original file, the soft link has no value because it points to a non-existing file. But in case of a hard link, it is entirely opposite. Even if you delete the original file, the hard link will still has its data from the original file because hard link acts as a mirror copy of the original file. So we can actually create a hard link between those files with almost the same settings as we used for the soft link. So let's just run this playbook. Let's take a look at the target machines. And here we see that we have file.txt and we have the file link.txt. If we edit something inside file.txt, if you write hello world and we save that, we can take a look inside of the file a link and we see that we have the same text. If we delete file.txt, we find that we still have file link.txt and we can still access everything inside that file. At last, we have the absent state, and we make use of that state to delete files or directories recursively on a target machine. We do not need a destination and not a source, but we use a path for that. So, and that is a path to either a file or a directory. So in our case, we will make use of the new directory from earlier. We will put that path right here. And whenever we want to delete something on a target machine, we are often required to do that as a root user. So I will write become yes to make sure that we do this as a root user. So let's run this playbook and see what happens. Let's take a look at the target machines. And as we can see, new directory has been removed just as expected. 
That's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope I was able to give you a great insight into the different aspects of the file module. If you have any questions, please leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you like the content, hit the like button below and if you want to see more videos like this in the future, you should definitely hit the subscribe button. I'll be posting many more videos about the different modules in Ansible, so stay tuned and I will hopefully see you in a future video. Bye bye guys.